we're going to look at an issue that's very important to community colleges, and that's how do you address sustainability in your curriculum? And uh, so uh, we are lucky enough to get uh, Adam Green here from Santa Barbara City College. And uh, Adam is, uh, uh, he is an assistant professor for biology. He has a bachelor's in wildlife biology and a bachelor's in chemistry from UC Davis and a PhD in wildlife ecology from Wisconsin. And he's coordinator for environmental studies and founder and center of their uh, Center for Sustainability. So uh, with that, I'd like to uh, bring Adam on. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> oh, you can all sit down. That's okay. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to try to push the envelope a little bit on some of this because I think to a certain extent you already have uh, really a lot of, of very good speakers talking about what's going on in community colleges with regard with, to renewable energy. Um, San Barbara City College is working on a program with solar energy uh, and photovoltaics. Um, and I think community colleges all over the state and all over the country are, are starting to figure this out. And Really what I see as a potential additional component of this is how do we do it a little, how do we push it a little bit further? How, what are some of the things that we can do? What might be some of our opportunities, but at the same time we have to acknowledge some of our challenges. So uh, I'm looking at a number of different components here. The first being how do you infuse some of these concepts of sustainability into existing curriculum? We're talking a lot about renewable energy here, but I think what you'll figure out is that renewable energy is just one piece of this larger puzzle and we have to address energy in its entirety if we're really gonna to come to terms with the fact that uh, how are we possibly going to replace the quantity of energy we produce through fossil fuels using renewable supplies in a relatively short enough period of time to avoid potential catastrophic impact from climate change. We're trying to create a workforce, though I think I'm gonna, again, minimize that in my talk because you're getting some great examples of that from other community colleges. And then I'm gonna kind of hopefully make you aware of the possibilities of transforming the campus into a living laboratory. The point of this is, is that you have workforce training or oftentimes you're partnering with industry going out into the field, but what about simply extending the classroom right out into your own campus? If you're gonna be teaching about renewable energy, why not have examples of renewable, renewable energy on your campus? And the next, the best uh, step with that is, how do you actually get your students to be able to install that renewable energy on your campus so that you actually have this nice cheap workforce actually installing this stuff? What you're seeing here, not a great picture, but um, is actually a parking structure uh, at Santa Barbara City College that's 235 kilowatts of solar power. Um, you know, at two and a half million dollars, that's not an easy thing for community college to go into. What might we do to actually partner up with the workforce training and in the installation phase in order to make these things a little bit more possible? So um, one opportunity I think we have, and I'm just choosing biofuels as an example, but really you can do this in any renewable energy supply. Uh, you already have heard that there's uh, a lot of potential for discussion of biofuels in the classroom. What I'm trying to do at our campus is actually uh, help other faculty infuse these larger scale concepts of sustainability into their existing curricula. So let's say you had one of these biorad uh, uh, labs. We're actually teaching students uh, the enzymatic processes, the issues around cellulosic ethanol, or cellulosic, excuse me, cellulosic biofuel production. And the point is, is what are some other things we might consider and create as part of the conversation so that students get a wider view of some of the challenges we face with biofuels. For example, the choice of the crop does make a huge difference in energy efficiency. I mean, I get students that come in my introductory environmental studies class and think biofuel, that's the way to go. But which biofuel? Are you talking about corn? Are you talking about switchgrass? Are you talking about algae? Are you talking about waste oil? You know, where is it being produced? How far is it being transported? What's it, what's it actually doing to the, to the environment um, as it's going through its entire life cycle? So, you know, you can investigate corn. It requires large amounts of water, biocides, and energy to produce. Um, affects the global price of a basic food stuff. Uh, a great quote is that average fill up of a 25 gallon SUV gas tank with ethanol requires the same amount of grain as it takes to feed a person for a year. So, you know, we have to really critically analyze some of this stuff. And I think students, whenever they are really engaging in these 
processes, be it in a lab or in workforce training, they should really be exposed to this larger issue because the fact of the matter is, is if we're training them to go into an industry that may not be sustainable, then we aren't doing them any favors. Um, you can look at, again, how we, you know, this, this extension of the, of the impacts because of a global system. The U.S. grows more corn for ethanol, grows less soy. As a result, Brazil compensates and grows more soy, cuts down more rainforest as an indirect effect. So now you're looking at use of corn-based ethanol may actually be a significant down uh, decrease in sustainability compared to other types of crops, other types of sources for something like a biofuel. If you look at palm oil and what that's doing with biodiesel in, in parts of Malaysia and Indonesia, 20% of greenhouse gas contributions from land use changes, including deforestation. The draining of peat swamps in Indonesia results in 2 billion tons of carbon dioxide emissions per year. This has made Indonesia the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases after the US and China, despite in a small industrial base. So biodiesel isn't necessarily the answer unless you really critically analyze where that, that uh, source is coming from to form the biodiesel. And there's been some very interesting studies out there that are starting to look at this and actually contributing a carbon debt to the biofuels based off the fact that if you're actually growing crops, no matter where you're growing them, uh, if you're growing them in the U.S., somebody else might be compensating for your diversion of your food crop into a fuel source and then compensating and growing a food source someplace else. And when they've actually analyzed this, they've figured out that in some areas, you're actually accumulating quite a carbon debt because you're taking out other na natural uh, habitats in order to grow that crop and there's a loss of carbon from the soil and of course from the vegetation that's going through decomposition or burning and if you add that to the biofuel crop it turns out that you've accumulated a debt that you have to pay off. Now if that debt takes something like 30 or, mu or so years to pay off and we're trying to avoid catastrophic climate change in the next 10 then most of these biofuels don't work. So we can't train students to go into a, to a workforce into an industry that might be facing some serious challenges down the road if climate change really starts to affect how we make these decisions. So you see here too, and as it was mentioned you know, before, you have to look at this larger picture um, and again looking at, at some of the uh, waste products or, or using land that isn't currently um, in a, a forest system or in an agricultural system may be a better bet. But again, that's a great discussion to introduce these more complex concepts into a classroom and get a lively discussion going on that makes that lab that you're trying to teach that much more relevant to your students.